Shalom of Racha from Yerushalayim, Ir HaKodesh. With the help of Hashem, tonight we study chapter 2, Mishnah 8, Perek Bet, Mishnah Het. And uh, we have been studying this Mishnah for quite a while. Tonight is part 6 of Mishnah 8. Uh, the continued study of this Mishnah is the Mishnah wherein we read of Hillel's teachings, tonight's emphasis on the words of Hillel, Marbe Yeshiva, Marbe Chochma. Marbe Yeshiva, Marbe Chochma. One of the many ways of translating our text, one of the, maze, one of the many ways of understanding the teaching of Hillel is, the more time one spends in the environment of a yeshiva, marbe yeshiva. If you spend a long time in a yeshiva, marbe chokhma, you will increase your level of wisdom. Uh, the more time one spends in the environment of a religious institution of learning, a religious institution of Torah, the greater the level of that person's chokhma, the greater the level of that person's wisdom. It is crucial to be connected to yeshiva. Crucial to be connected to Torah centers, to yeshivot, to batei midrash, to upanot, to midrashot, to Torah libraries. Marbe, marbe yeshiva. The more time that a person spends there, the more advanced his or her wisdom will become. Marbe yeshiva. The word yeshiva means to sit. The more we sit, the more you sit in front of the sages. Yeshiva, you're sitting and you're listening to the lectures. You're uh, following the teachings of the, of the rabbis, of the masters of wisdom. The more one absorbs the teachings by sitting there, marbe yeshiva, by studying under the tutelage of these great people, the more chokhmah wisdom will be internalized. Marbe Yeshiva could also be emphasizing the importance of a certain settled mind, a certain calm atmosphere. Yeshiva. Yeshiva, perhaps related to the Hebrew term Yeshuv Hadat, a certain frame of mind of calm and tranquility. The Gemara discusses how Torah used to be studied in a standing position. The Gemara in Megillah, page 21a, says, Mimot Moshe, Ad Rabban Gamliel, from the time of Moshe, our teacher, Moses, till the time of Rabban Gamliel. You know how many years that is? Uh, one of the great rabbis of the period of the Mishnah. Lo hayu l'meidim Torah, elam umad. They would stand when they studied Torah. Could you imagine? It's barely, some people it's very difficult to even, to even uh, follow the, the classes or the studies if they're sitting. Imagine every time you'd learn, everyone would stand out of respect for the Torah. There seems to have been some kind of recognition of the fact, of the fact that people cannot continue that way. That maybe the greater good will be accomplished through Marbe Yeshiva, literally. Let everyone sit down and study. Because maybe the Yeshiva will create a, an environment of a settled feeling. Maybe a prerequisite for Chochmah, prerequisite for wisdom, is Yeshiva. The rabbis contrast the different statements of our teacher Moshe. On the one hand, Moshe says in Deuteronomy, Chapter 9. Vo a shave bahar. Vo a shave bahar. And I sat on the mountain. I know there are other ways to translate the word a shave, but that's what the rabbi said. Vo a shave bahar. He's speaking about har I said, I sat there. I sat on the mountain. And in the very next chapter of Devarim, the very next chapter of, De of Deuteronomy, it says, Vo anochi amadati bahar. I stood on the mountain. Well, did he sit or did he stand? A 
according to the Gemara, Rava teaches that maybe the kashot, the kashot were miyushav, the rakot were muumat. Rakot muumat. Maybe there were certain teachings, which even uh, soft rakot, maybe the easier teachings or the more direct teachings, maybe he was able to stand while while studying them because it was quickly understood. But the kashot. The ones that, that required analysis, the ones that required review, the ones that required, required in-depth, uh, uh, a, a, a form of dissection of the, of the ideas. Maybe he couldn't do it standing up. Kashot miyushav. And therefore yeshiva, perhaps, is a, is a concept, is a concept of a settled feeling of study. Our nation has always been associated with yeshiva and yeshivot. Mimehem shalavotenu, says the Gemara in Yoma 28. Mimehem shalavotenu. Lo parasha yeshiva mehem. Never was the Jewish people separated from a yeshiva concept. Hayu b'mitzrayim yeshiva imahem. When they were in Egypt, there was a yeshiva concept. Hayu bamidbar yeshiva imahem. When they were in the desert, there was a concept of a yeshiva. Avraham Avinu, Zakain, Yoshev bi yeshiva haya. Abraham, where was he? He's studying in, in the yeshiva. Yitzchak Avinu, Zakain, Yoshev bi yeshiva haya. Yaakov Avinu, Zakain, Yoshev bi yeshiva. That's what our nation is about. Am Yisrael has from time immemorial been connected to yeshiva and yeshivot. Marbe yeshiva, marbe chokhma. The greater the yeshiva, the greater the wisdom. It could also mean that it depends who you have studying under your, under your guidance. If you have one or two students, well, that's great. I mean, you can take, teach him one person, it's great. And you have a few students, you have a selection of students. Let's say a person is blessed to have Marbe Yeshiva. There are, there are classes here in Yerushalayim, in the, in the Mir Yeshiva, not far from our house. I think where the rabbi has, uh, what is it, a few hundred students in, in, in the shiur, is that correct? A few hundred students every day. He gives a shiur every day to a few hundred students. You know, there are people that teach you know, uh, internationally, they have thousands of students. Maybe marbe yeshiva, the greater the number of the people in your yeshiva, marbe chokhma. Maybe that also can increase wisdom. Because we have a teaching in several places of Shas. We have a teaching, in one place I believe it says Rabbi Hanina, in the other place I believe it says Rabbi, that, to quote, Harbei Torah, it's in Makot 10a, Megillah 7a. Harbei Torah, Lamadati Me Rabotai. I learned a great deal of Torah from my teachers, from my rabbi. Ume Chaverai, and from my friends, Yoter Mehem. I learned more Torah from my friends than from my teachers. How could that be? You know, friends didn't know more than the teachers, but maybe. Uh, through a discussion, through question and answer, maybe some of the questions he was too shy to, to uh, ask the rabbi, so he discussed it with his friend. <laughs> but the culmination of that statement is, is, is the one that we're, we're discussing now. <laughs> and I learned more from my students than I did from my friends and my teachers. <laughs> If that's the case, so marbe yeshiva, marbe chokhma. If you're privileged to have many students, marbe, then the more students you have, the higher the level of chokhma will be because this student will, will ask you on this aspect of what you said. This, this person will challenge you on, on that point. You'll have to clarify it for, for this particular student. You'll have to prepare uh, your delivery of, 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 the, of the material in a way that all of the students can understand. And through their, through their questions, and through their uh, quest of knowledge, you yourself will become greater. 
Therefore, Marbe is Shiva. Shiva. I'm sorry? Rabbi Akiva has 24,000 24, students. 24,000 students, yeah. 10 the greatest level. Perhaps, that's right, that's right. That's, very, than his teacher. that's, very, right, that's a very good point, right? Mm-hmm. In other words, that maybe each of the students mm-hmm. clarified a new aspect for him, and maybe it's not just that Rabbi Akiva reaches great levels of wisdom, and everything is Aliba, the Rabbi Akiva, but maybe Rabbi Akiva, the 24,000 students were not only helping each other, you know, the 12,000 pairs of students, but they were increasing the level of the Chochmah of their Rav. I accept that, yes. And we learned earlier, if you remember in Pirkei Avot, earlier in the chapters of the Fathers, in chapter 1, uh, I think it's Mishnah 6, where we learned about Asel L'Charav. And uh, we learned over there, uh, in, in the Bartanura, that Asel L'Charav perhaps means find a, a, a system where your Marbe Yeshiva, in the language of the Rav over there, Sheikh Balo Rav Echad, Maybe find one rabbi whose derech you can relate to. Sheikbalo Rav Echad Shilmad Mimenu Tamid. The Lo Yilmad Hayom Im Echad Ul Macharim Acher. Maybe that today I'm going to this rabbi, to Margo, to that rabbi, uh, to him, and to, to this one, and to that one. Maybe, maybe, Asay Lecharav. Maybe if a person increases the time that they spend with one particular rabbi, Marbechochma. And even though the Rav brings the teachment, teaching of the Gemara, that sometimes the, the Gemara says, you know, hello made, so teaching in Masechet Abu Dazara, the Gemara says, hello made Torah, may Rav had a no roesiman bracha, that maybe it's not the best of uh, activities to learn Torah only from one rabbi. So the Gemara distinguishes maybe different approaches of, of, of style of study. Maybe you can learn from many people. Maybe if you're looking for guidance in a certain legal, legalistic way, the halachic way, maybe it's the difference between sevara and halacha. Uh, maybe it's the difference between a tradition and maybe uh, various approaches. But there is a concept of marbe, marbe yeshiva, marbe chachma. We could also explain marbe yeshiva if a person if a person understands the concept, if a person is marbe yeshiva, not necessarily on the level of studying. You know, let's say all you do is walk into an institution of Torah. And you don't do anything there. You just spend time sitting there. Well, in the Midrash, it is compared to a person who walks into... A, uh, a perfume factory. Yeah? <laughs> the, the Midrash contrasts the following. Let's say a person walks into, if, if you remember what, how, how the processing, the, the, the way they used to process uh, hides of animals, a tannery, where the, uh, the odor, was, the, the stench was, was very, 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 very difficult. And the Gemara says, if you walk into, the Midrash says, if you walk into a certain place where they're uh, involved in, in uh, working with the hides of animals, and even if you don't touch anything, when you walk out, a little bit of that, of that smell will be absorbed. I guess if you walk into a uh, very large herring factory, even if you don't touch any herring, you just walk from the north entrance to the south exit. You know, just walk through the herring, herring factory. Well, a little bit of that herring will be absorbed. Maybe in your clothes, maybe you're being... and some, Let's say you walk through a perfume factory. Let's say you walk through a spice factory. You don't touch any of the spices. You don't, you don't approach any of the colognes. You don't try any of the testers. You don't touch any perfume. When you walk out from the north entrance to the south exit, there'll be something that's absorbed. Can it be that Marbe Yeshiva, just Yeshiva, just sitting there, mm-hmm. just sitting there, maybe just being in that, being in that environment, itself will be Marbe Yeshiva. You'll just pick it, just just walk into a yeshiva and, and, and be there. And somehow, I don't, want, I don't know if it's a concept of osmosis or maybe environmental influence, marbe yeshiva, without even learning. And, it sorry? It says when the ten Jews learn the shechina. Shechina is there, correct? So it's a, so it's a holy environment, so you, that's correct. So you, so you have access. You have access to, to, to godliness. Even, yeah, if you, you I'm sorry? Just, yeah, even if you see it. Right, 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 that's good. That's, that's, that's true, right? I know of a certain man. I don't know if I should mention his name. Maybe it's personal. Uh, I, I knew this man well. 
or somewhere. Well, I know a man, Zechronol of Racha, he no longer lives in this world, he's in Gan Eden, who never really was privileged to study in Europe in any kind of formal way. He never was afforded the opportunity of going to any yeshiva. Uh, there were so many forms of pressure on this person to work that he never had the luxury of a yeshiva education. And even when he arrived in the United States, I believe it was from Hungary, when he arrived in the United States, he also had to work very diligently to support his family. When he retired to Israel, that's where I met him most when he was in Israel, when he retired to Israel, listen to this, he attended a daily shiur in Talmud, in Hebrew. He didn't speak Hebrew, but he didn't understand Talmud. And he went every day, and I, 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 I marvel at the possibility, I don't know if any of us would be able to even do that, every day, not once a month. Every day we'd go to the shiur. He, he didn't follow the text. He didn't follow the, the discussion. But just going to, going to the shiur is also something great. I believe that this person is in that category of marbe yeshiva, marbe chokhma. Uh, unquestionably, a very special level of dedication to Torah. He's blessed to have a son who is a great Talmud Chacham. He has grandchildren who are rabbis, rabbanim, Talmudim Chachamim. It has to do with his marbe yeshiva, marbe chokhma. There's more than one way to be marbe yeshiva. There are special places on this world. There are especially holy places where perhaps just being there brings wisdom. Marbe yeshiva, marbe chokhma. I didn't read this interpretation anywhere, so uh, I, hope, I hope you'll allow me poetic license. Uh, I feel it especially since Baruch Hashem, we're talking in Eretz Yisrael, in Yerushalayim. And this week's Torah section uses the word yeshiva also. We're reading the Shabbat, Parashat Kitavo, where we read, Virishta, Vaya Kitavo Laaret, Virishta, Vyashafta, Ba, Yashafta, Yeshiva. And you shall inherit the land and you shall dwell therein, Vyashafta, Ba. In this week's Torah section, we read about the commandment of Yeshiva, the Eretz Yisrael, to live in the land. You shall inherit the land and dwell therein. And perhaps one could say, even just Yeshiva in Eretz Yisrael brings wisdom. According to one Talmudic tradition, Afilu Avira de Eretz Yisrael, Machkim, even the very ear of Israel can bring wisdom. The ear of Israel brings wisdom. Yeah, just Marbe Yeshiva. Maybe if you, if you live in the right place, if you live in Eretz Yisrael, Shkula Mitzvah Yeshiva Eretz Yisrael, can I get called and Mitzvah Shabbat Torah? What a level of, of, of accomplishment. Afilu Avirad Eretz Yisrael. Machim. The Talmud teaches in Masechet Bava Batra, page 158, D in Bava Batra, that Rabbi Zeira, one of the great Rabbanim who moved from Babel to Eretz Israel, from Babylonia to Israel, was able to understand new insights into Jewish law only after his Aliyah to Israel. In the language of the Rashbam, explain the commentary in Bava Batra, in the language of the Rashbam explaining Rabbi Zeira's newfound understanding of this very significant aspect of, of uh, halacha, he said it had something to do with the very ear and the atmosphere of Israel. Shemayaliti l'Eretz Yisrael, afilu avirat l'Eretz Yisrael machim. Rabbi Zeira was basically saying, Shemayaliti l'Eretz Yisrael, the tati at libi l'atzeit mishi tati arishona. I reached new levels of analysis of truth. The Rashbam explains that Rabbi Zeirah had changed his halachic position on a certain important rabbinic debate. Rabbi Zeirah commented that the essence of Israel assisted him in this new level of understanding. May I suggest, Alpi 
מרבה ישיבה, מרבה חוכמה. Increased levels of yeshiva in the Holy Land of Israel brings to new levels of chachma understanding. Baruch Hashem, if, the, if this is a true reading, it is a special divine blessing to be able to learn this, this lesson here sitting in Eretz Yisrael. Sometimes yeshiva, merely sitting somewhere, can constitute a mitzvah. For instance, in the Talmud and later in the Code of Jewish Law, in the Shulchan Aruch, we read of the respect that we are to show to Batei Knesset. There's a whole section of Shulchan Aruch, the Hilchot Beit Knesset, the laws of a synagogue. Specifically, I refer to Orach Chaim Siman Kuf Nun Aleph, chapter 151 of, of Orach Chaim. It is improper to just enter a synagogue for a matter totally unrelated to prayer or study. You can't just walk into a synagogue. You, know, you, you, can't, you can't walk. The sin of the Beit Knesset has a, has a certain kiddusha. So the, the, the Gemara discusses the Shulchan Aruch. Uh, the Shulchan Aruch continues and expands upon this theme. Let's say uh, you have to walk into the shul for nothing associated to, to Torah or to Tefillah. The im tzarich li kanes behem Let's our call. For a personal reason, you want to go into the synagogue. Let's say you, you, you want to call out uh, that person, Ruvain. Ruvain is in the shul. Ruvain is in the Beit Knesset. And you want to call out Ruvain. You want to talk to him. But he's sitting in the Beit Knesset. You can go in the crow Adan. So what should you do? So seemingly it's improper to just walk into the shul and say, Ruvain, could you come outside and talk to, talk to me? Because you walked into a, to a sanct- sanctuary of holiness. So you kanes. The Ikramat, walk in and open up a chumash and, and, and read a few sentences from, from the Bible, from Tanakh. Or you know, you're not Tanakh, so, so, so repeat a teaching, repeat a halacha, a rabbinic teaching. O Yomar, Devar Shmuah, repeat, repeat a lesson. And then call out Ruvain. So it shouldn't appear as if you just walked into the shul for your own purposes. But let's say you don't know how to read texts. You don't know much about Tanakh. You're not, you're not a Tanakh student. You don't know how to read the Tanakh. And you don't know anything about the rabbinic teachings. So what should you do? So the Shulchan Aruch says you have two possibilities. Maybe you should walk over to one of the children who's in the shul. And maybe you should say to them, could you, could you please teach me something? Yomar lechad mehat tinokot. Tinokot in 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 Talmud Kippur does not necessarily mean infants; it means children. Yomar lechad mehat tinokot. Kroli pasuk sheatakoriba. Could you read me the sentence that you're that you currently study? Oh, and this is what I wanted to mention. All you have to do is when you walk into the shul, and I've seen people do this. If you're walking into the synagogue for a matter unrelated to prayer or to study, sit down. Sit down a little bit. Just sit in the synagogue. Don't say anything. I know he doesn't even discuss the concept of prayer. I mean, what does he just say? Pray a little bit. I don't know. Other people who don't know how to pray. He doesn't discuss that. But he says, even if you don't know how to study, you don't know anything about Tanakh, you don't know anything about Mishnah, you don't know anything about Shmua, you're too shy, or there are no children there. So what should you do? Oh, Yishebo Ma'at. Relax. Stay there a while. Vachakach Yitzeh. Vachakach Yitzeh. Quote, Shahayishiva Bahem. Because just being there, just being in the synagogue, spending time in the synagogue, mitzvah. Shene'emar, Ashrei, Yoshevei Beitacha. Blessed are, fortunate are the people who just sit in the synagogue, who sit in your house, oh God. Yoshevei Beitacha. Sometimes even Yeshiva constitutes a mitzvah. Marbe Yeshiva. May we all sit in those great places that are the proper places to be. And may our, may our increased levels of yeshiva there indeed increase levels of wisdom, understanding, insight, and analysis. For ultimately, marbe yeshiva, marbe chokhmah. Thank you so much. Shalom.